Karen and I are talking about something that I bet those of you who are writers and creators deal with, which is perfectionism. So Karen's example is, you know, Karen, you said you spent a long time writing two paragraphs, like longer than you would have liked. And you still felt like it's not good enough to put out there, right? How do I, how do I deal with that? Well, and by the way, I want to welcome everyone watching this to comment below for how you deal with something like that. But here's how I deal with it. I create temporary limits for myself. Um, and I do my best to practice those, those limits. There are two limits, okay? One is time I've spent on any creative project, like a blog post. So for example, with blog writing, this is my process. I basically do every blog post in two, uh, actually, nowadays I do it in three sessions. So let me explain. The first session is just a few minutes where I tweet out the, the, the beginnings of an idea for a blog post. If you find me on Twitter, right, just twitter.com slash George Cow, it literally says, my about says, using Twitter to store ideas for potential blog posts. And you'll see my Twitter threads are basically like, and of course I practice creating so much that even my random ideas are okay probably now, but at least better than when I, when I was new to creating. Anyway, so that's really my first session is sometime, I, I actually do this during the lunch hour. I'll take five minutes during lunch to just tweet out a potential blog post idea and any other like, and then the next couple of lunches, I will add to that thread any other ideas that are related to that, to that topic. So that's my first session is kind of brainstorming. So every, every week I basically give myself two Twitter threads, two ideas that I'm adding to anyway. Um, and the next week is two more ideas anyway. So that's for, and then the second session is taking my Twitter thread or whatever brainstorming I've done and put it into a really rough draft of, you know, in tech, in the writing world, there's a technical term, SFD, shitty first draft. Look it up. <laughs> a lot of people use that term, shitty first draft. So that's the second session is just shitty first draft. You know, there, no formatting of any kind, no subheadings. You know, some paragraphs are super long. Some are like one sentence, you know, nothing. Just type it out as fast as I can. What could I say about this? What objections that does a reader might have? How could I address that? Is there an example I could share? Uh, is there a related question that I might, you know, whatever, okay? Second session. And that second session, I give myself half an hour. That's a key, 30 minutes to just shitty first draft it out. And I know, by the way, that you can do this too in 30 minutes. You know why? Because whenever I've, I've, I've hosted a writing class and I give my students a, get this, seven minute timer to write a social media post, seven minute timer. I bet you if I did this right now, you would do it too. Just about every student posts something in seven minutes. And it's usually better than what I come up with in seven minutes, which is, which is why I know you all can do it. Because I, I can almost assure that you are a faster writer than me. Because it's just what I've noticed in, uh, in my attendees and in what they can do in seven minutes. English is my second language, number one. So uh, in, in, in a way, I've, I've struggled off and on with English just my whole life. Um, so that's why I feel like most of you, if some of you English is your second language too, but if English is not your second language, you probably write faster than me, just because of it's through and through your bones, even more than mine. Anyway, so um, that's my second session. It's 30 minutes, shitty first draft. And then my third session, which is another day, third session, also half an hour, is polish and, and po polish, actually, so I'm sorry, there is a fourth session, which is to publish it. So fourth session takes another 30 minutes of like just putting the, the, the logistics of like putting it on my website and on here or on there, that kind of thing. It doesn't take me 30 minutes. It takes, it's editing and publishing it takes me like 15 minutes. So does that make sense? So, so I really want to encourage you to have that kind of process for yourself, a workflow for your writing. And, um, so that's one limit I set on myself. The second limit I set on myself is a word count limit. Now, that helps. And word count limits should be a range. 
it shouldn't just be maximum because if there's no maximum work element, a thousand words or whatever, and you're like, well, I wrote two words. Is that good enough? <laughs> yeah, technically, I guess even one word is good enough for a blog post. <laughs> I don't know, but, you know, poets. Um, but I have a range. So I said, well, blog posts, I'd like it to be like, I don't know, between 600 to 1500 words, somewhere around there. Um, you know, seven, you know, seven, 700 ish. I usually land somewhere around seven to a 700 to a thousand words. So like when I, when I keep my word count and by the way, I, um, I, sh I show you on Google, Google document, right? Google document has a wonderful tool where it, where it's a it's a word count tool you you know you go to google doc click word count and you click display word count while typing check that box and click okay and then uh, i you know you can set on you click on the menu and set on words and now that you're typing you know give give it a second to count all the words that you're typing and you know and so this is really helpful for like word count limit to say hey i'm at 700 now or whatever you know what i mean so you see on the bottom left so anyway, I hope that helps as a way to practice. That's how I do it, is to, is to keep, keep limits, have a, have, a clear, have a clear flow. And then finally, I'll say this, you know, ultimately, none of us know what's good enough in terms of our creations. And I would say we ourselves are not the right judge for the quality of our content. Only the audience is the right judge for the quality of our content. All we can do is judge ourselves based on quantity. Did we think by, by quantity, I mean, how many things did we put out there? And not judge, I don't, I don't mean to harshly judge yourself. I just mean to evaluate ourselves or to plan or to set that as a goal. To say, I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna set a goal of quantity I'll let the audience tell me about the quality, right? And so I just keep putting half-assed things out there, right? And uh, over time, whatever I can put out in my time limit gets out there and almost always it's half-assed because I'm a perfectionist. So I only have two choices, perfection or half-assed and perfection takes me forever, but I never put things out. So it's gotta be half-assed then if I have the time limit. I just keep putting half-assed things out there. And then over time, I analyze the data. So like, oh, I put 10 blog posts out there. Well, which of the 10 really made a difference? Let me look at the data to say, well, this has this many views and this many likes versus this one has you know, this many views and this many likes. Well, now I know which one made more of an impact. So I'll do more, you know. So I hope that helps with, you know, so with perfectionism and, and creativity, so thanks. Donna, thank you. Yes, another, a, a gentler way of saying half-ass, <laughs> a more uh, euphemism, I guess, a good enough. Yes, good enough. Uh, now for me, uh, even good enough is not good enough of a word because I, I tend to still berate myself or beat myself with what good enough means. So I, that's why I have to use half-ass as the term. So use whatever term allows you to create and publish more. I mean, that's the, that's the main idea. Use whatever mantra helps you to just stick to your time limit, get it out there.